I built a beautiful winter Yule themed village in Valheim. Hey everyone, my name is Smitty and today I'm bringing you one of my most festive builds yet. We're getting into the holiday spirit and I'll be showing you how I transform this mountain into a beautiful Yule themed village. For those of you who would like to download this build or just show extra support to the channel, this world file will be available on the Smitty Survival Patreon page and a big thank you to these awesome patrons who continue to support the content. This is the season for building, so hope you all enjoy, and without further ado, grab a snack, grab a drink, let's get right into it. Starting out, I always take some time to collect my thoughts about the direction I want to take a build. My vision for this project was to build a quaint Yule village hidden up in the mountains with a whimsical fantasy flair to it. This town would consist of various little shops and vendors selling items for the Yule season, and as opposed to my last project, which was very dark and dreary, I wanted this village to have a very jubilant and happy feel to it. But definitely something different, and not your typical rugged Viking build, but I was excited to lean into another holiday themed project. Jumping into the build, I thought I'd start by building something that would establish some holiday Yule themes right away. After leveling an area that would be the center of my town, I started utilizing a combination of wood poles and Yule trees to build a structure that, when completely covered, gave the illusion of a much larger Yule tree. This is a nice creative technique you can utilize to create Yule trees in whatever size you're looking for, and in this case it served as an excellent centerpiece for my town. Next I wanted to establish the first building of my Yule town. I was still thinking through how I'd deliver my theme through the architecture, so I started out small to serve as a bit of a test run. When thinking about how to design buildings with a theme, a lot of it comes down to how you manipulate your roof lines. You know how they say eyebrows are the most expressive part of your face? Well, roof lines are basically like the eyebrows of a building. When we manipulate angles or points on our roof lines, it can be quite impactful and give buildings a much different feeling. Typically in Valheim, we are limited to two different angles for our roof, either 26 degrees or 45 degrees. But in order to achieve my vision, I knew I needed to break out of this mold, so I developed a technique whereby I could outline a custom roof shape on top of the normal roof, then fill it in with wood beams. Although this technique greatly increases the time and resources needed to build the roof, the flexibility of this approach allows me to build pretty much whatever shape I want. The added bonus of doing this in the mountains means that there's a nice dusting of snow that sits on top of the beams, and there's no wearing down of the pieces since there's no rain. Although I could have achieved a similar result by just using the gizmo mod and rotating the standard roof pieces, I think it's fun to find creative ways to solve problems using the standard Valheim build system first before turning to mods. The roof reminded me of a Yule hat, so I decided this was going to be a Yule hat shop. I spent some time splitting up the shop into a crafting side, where it looked like hats were maybe being created or repaired, and then on the other side would be the actual storefront. Moving back to the outside, I thought I would finish up with a bit of landscaping with some natural elements. The cool thing about snow in Valheim is that even if you spawn in rocks or trees from other biomes, if you're at a high enough elevation, they also become covered in snow. This is why in certain high areas in the mistlands we see snow, but it also meant that I could bring in other assets from other biomes to really transform this area into a wintry forest, which I thought would be really cool and different. With my hat shop complete, I was really happy with the direction it was headed. The shop was small and cozy, but more importantly, it allowed me to establish a solid architectural technique and theme that I knew I could carry throughout the rest of the project. Next, it was time to move on to another small shop for my town. Providing the town with some delicious baked goods for the Yule season seemed like a charming idea, so my plan was to build a bakery. Way back in the Hearth and Home update, I did a bakery design that I really liked, so my idea was to take inspiration from that build and update it to be consistent with the Yule theme, still utilizing the high roof angles, and then adding some fun curls to the ends of my roof to add some additional flair to it.
On the interior, the main section of the building would be decorated to be a workspace where the baked goods were being prepared, leaving a window to the outside where the pies could cool before being brought to the front for sale. I thought it would be cool to have the front of the shop have a bit of a display case for the baked goods. So I placed some stairs for shelves and then placed the baked items behind glass pieces, which actually looked really nice. From there I would just finish up some decorations, add some fencing and other natural elements, and the bakery was complete. Definitely another charming addition to the Yule Town, and I was really loving playing around with some of these different roof lines and angles. After building two smaller buildings, I thought it was time to add some bigger, multi-level structures to the town. My plan for these next buildings was for it to be a tavern that was connected to an inn, so I plotted out an area for the structures and then connected them with a curved walkway. Again for the roof lines, I elected to go with steeper angles, but for my second roof, I really wanted to push this concept and create something dramatic. So I decided to really exaggerate the angle. Definitely was a challenge to get all of it to line up, but I think this over-exaggerated style really looked cool and added a nice fantasy feel to it. I would quickly finish up some decorative details on the outside, laying in some walls and adding some Yule decorations to bring the structures more in line with my theme, and then moved on to the interiors. I first started with a structure with a very steep roof. I decided this was going to be a cozy little tavern where people could stop in, eat, drink, relax, and be merry. The other structure would be the inn where all the beds were. Moving back to the outside, I would finish up with some landscaping to bring forward the winter forest feel. But after speaking with my girlfriend who pops in from time to time to give her thoughts, she recommended the idea of turning the Yule tree sideways to use as a lighted garland, which turned out to be an amazing idea. Unfortunately, I did need to use Gizmo to do this, and although I do try to mitigate the use of mods when possible, occasionally there's just an idea that's too good to pass up on, and these lighted garlands looked perfect for my Yule town. When it was all said and done, I was really pleased with how these structures worked out, and I loved how it was all joined together with a charming little bridge. The tavern was compact and cozy, the inn provided a nice warm spot where the visitors could spend the night. Looking over the structures I had so far, I realized my composition was a little unbalanced. We had two short structures on one side, and then two tall structures on the other, so my thought was to add something behind my shorter structures that set higher in the backdrop help balance out the scene. I really like the look of the exaggerated steep roof line, so I thought I would just create a house in that style. With this tall house complete, I was really pleased with how it looked and think it balanced out my composition a little bit more. Since I built it on the hill, the roof actually just peeks over the tree line, which I think looks really nice and helps give a sense of depth to the town when you walk in. After working on a couple different buildings, it was time to switch things up and work on something a little different. At the far side of my plot, there was a sunken down area so I had the idea of making this a small frozen lake. Valheim actually has some ice floor assets that are used to create the frozen lakes in the mountain dungeons. But I thought it would be a cool idea to repurpose this asset to create a frozen lake for my town. I scaled up some pieces and started laying them in, and the result was perfect and it really transformed the area into something new. Since the frozen lake created a split in the area, 
I decided to construct a bridge to help connect the two sides. I spent some time outlining a nice curved shape to follow, and then worked in some details and decorations to give it a charming Yule feel. The bridge ended up looking really nice, and in combination with the small frozen lake below, I really loved how this just added a whole new charming element to the village. Next I thought it'd be fun to build a structure next to the water. I wanted to do something that wasn't as symmetrical as my other buildings, so I outlined a roof that was a little off-center, but had a similar wave shape as my hat shop. My thought for this building was to make it a Yule supply shop, so a place where you could purchase wreaths, garlands, gift boxes, or whatever was needed for the Yule season. Finish up the exteriors, again adding the Yule trees for my lighted garland, and then added some snow covered trees to insulate the area a little more and make it feel less exposed. Overall, I was really happy with how the structure turned out. Definitely an outside the box design, but I really enjoy structures that make me think in that way. Next I decided to add some fancy Yule houses on the hill beyond my lake. These would be a similar design to the one that I built behind the bakery, but with some added dimensions. In building villages, I sometimes get carried away working on these vendors and shops and forget that these people actually need somewhere to live. So I was going to try to keep that in mind a little more and spread some homes throughout the area. There wasn't a ton of room for decorating the interiors, but I almost prefer it that way. I think it's a fun challenge putting together small, cozy spaces versus trying to fill large open areas, and I think that each one of these homes has a nice warm feeling to them. These houses certainly weren't mansions, but I really liked the style and thought they fit in really nicely with the rest of the village. Next, it was time to work on the space right before my bridge. I'd left it a bit vacant, so I needed to fill it with something. I established the space around the town center as more of a commercial district of the town, so I decided to remain consistent with that and build another shop. Maybe this time it'd be a tool shop or a general supply store. I wanted this building to stand out a little bit more, so I plotted it out to be multi-dimensional with a couple tiers of roof. Again, because the two buildings immediately next to it were smaller structures, I thought it'd be a good idea to switch things up and make sure this one was a bit larger and stood out even more. The interior would just be another cozy shop, this time more focused around tools or household items. Maybe if you're looking to gift somebody a new woodcutting axe, this is where you would come. Overall, I really liked how this structure turned out and thought the multiple layers of roofing on the front actually looked quite nice. Moving on to the area next to my shop, I thought it'd be a nice addition to add some smaller vendor stalls or kiosks in the town center. For this first small plot, I decided to make a hot cocoa bar where the townsfolk and visitors could come grab a nice hot beverage. I wanted this to be an open face structure where people could walk right up and order, and then also have some tables scattered around where people could sit and enjoy their drink. I really found this hot cocoa bar quite charming. I thought it was the perfect addition to my Yule Village. Sometimes it's these little bite-sized structures that are actually my favorite. They can add a lot to a scene and they don't take hours to complete, so that's always nice. Next, I would remain consistent with the vendor stall theme and build another one in a similar style. This time, however, I was thinking this would just be one focused on selling gift boxes. Again, nothing groundbreaking, but I really do like these small vendor stalls and thought this one was a nice addition as well. Moving on to the other side of my village, I noticed there was a nice open plateau, so I started thinking about what I could incorporate here that would fit the Yule theme. 
What popped into my head was a Yule Tree farm. I started by leveling off the hill a little bit more, and then moved on to placing a series of Yule Trees that could be harvested for sale. I made sure to combine some trees to give the illusion that some were larger than others, and then started spawning in some normal trees around the hill to make it feel more secluded. More like a sheltered grove of trees versus just being exposed on the top of the mountain. I then moved on to creating a shop where the trees could be processed and purchased. Because the pathway leading up to the grove carved into the hill a little bit, it presented the opportunity to make a small bridge across each side, so I went ahead with another curved design. After adding some decorations to the exterior of the structure, I wanted to ensure I implemented some basic elements to make it look like these Yule trees were being processed. So I rotated some to look like they were cut and leaning against the wall, and then also put one on the table as if it was being worked on or trimmed. I then just added some finishing touches by adding some stone walls, some carts, and then ensured I had those signature curls on my roof lines. With my Yule tree farm done, I was really happy with how it turned out. These smaller little ideas were really working well together, and I thought this was a great addition considering the theme of my town. Next I decided to move my project down the slope of my mountain. I wanted to spread out the village a little bit more to help with the instance buildup, as my roof style was pretty resource heavy and I needed to consider the rendering constraints of everything together. Just as I had done with the small lake above, I thought it would be really cool to have a larger lake down in the valley below. So I again took the ice floor assets and filled a large portion of the valley so it looked like a frozen lake. From there I moved on to create a dock pier on one of the shorelines, before moving on and creating what would eventually be a bait and tackle shop. For this structure I wanted to experiment with some different roof lines, still keeping the curvy whimsical feel, but instead going for a more concave look instead of going for the convex point. I built out a balcony as I thought it would be good to have a view overlooking the lake, and then used some wood logs and chain hook to add a fun decorative element that looked like a giant fishing pole off the side of the building, just to better signal that this was a bait and tackle shop. From here, it was just a matter of executing the decorations, having rods out on display, fish mounted on the walls, and boxes and bins which contained various baits for purchase. The shop complete, I was really happy with the result. I would need to do some work later to fill in the areas below the balcony, but I liked how the structure was really distinct and was immediately distinguishable as a fishing shop. Next, I wanted to revisit my lake and build in some more story elements around it. I thought it would be a fun idea to have a Yule ice fishing tournament going on, so I started to build out some areas where it looked like they were holes in the ice, accompanied by some fish laying out. I would scatter some more of these areas around the lake before moving back to the dock to set up an award stand for the tournament. For this area, I would have different fish rotated and mounted to look like they were hanging on hooks, perhaps to be measured for the contest, including the winning catches, which are just comically large. But I actually love the story that this tells. That there were giant fish in this mountain lake is just something that would only exist in a fun fantasy world. Although, these large fish did create a dilemma. I now had these massive fish with no evidence of how the heck anyone got them through the ice. So to solve this, I went back to the lake and built some areas that would be disguised to look like some large chunks of ice were cut out. Perhaps these were the areas where larger fish could have come from. Overall, I really liked this little Yule ice fishing tournament scene. I thought it was a creative way to use the space and added a charming little story to this part of the town. Next it was time for me to revisit the space between the dock and the bait shop. I started out by placing some boats on stilts to suggest that these were being winterized, and then moved on to start working through the vacant spaces in front of the bait shop. Given the ice fishing tournament at the lake, 
I thought it would be nice to integrate an area where people could come warm themselves by the fire and grab a warm drink, so I decided to transform this area into a walk-up bar. I thought overall this was a nice utilization of the space, and I could definitely visualize tournament participants coming up from the ice, grabbing a nice warm drink or a bite to eat at this spot. Next, my plan was just to build out a small little neighborhood in the area behind. These homes would still have some Yule flair to them, but would definitely be more modest than the fancy versions at the top of the mountain. Again, these were all quite small homes, but they still lent themselves to some cozy spaces, and I think filled out the area quite nicely. At this point, my instance count was getting pretty high, and I was concerned about dropping too many more frames. So I decided to start polishing up some final areas with some finishing touches, just things like ensuring pathways through the village made sense, and then adding more trees to fill out the winter forest feel that I was going for from the beginning. Overall, I was really happy with how everything turned out. It wasn't a massive village, but it was quaint, and definitely carried that nice Yule theme throughout. All that was left to do was tie up some loose ends, add a few extra details, do the cinematic. <laughs> 